Hey, how are you doing this morning? Bob Books here at the Gilly Galoo Bird downtown Elmont. Continue on and update with that on uh, the migration of the ruby throated hummingbird. We talked a lot about the feeders, and so we wanted to get into uh, the actual bird. And um, they is a real technology is such a great thing sometimes when we we start getting into this type of thing because in the past we relied solely on citizen science uh, that was documented personally. Uh, it's similar, but now with the advent of the internet and technology and, and what have you, it's more, uh, aware, people are more aware and it's more easily accessible. And one of the sites that I really enjoy is uh, this one, it's uh, called hum Hummingbird Central. And they have this uh, interactive map that once you spot, uh, in our case, the ruby-throated hummingbird, uh, some of the other colors that you see on there are for other species, but we don't get them here in eastern Ontario. A lot of them are up the west coast of the U.S. and into Canada or around uh, the bottom end of California and those areas that have different birds. But these are this is the ruby-throated hummingbird sightings that have been added to that. And I think if you can see, if I can get close enough here, you can see in our area that um, they're moving ever so close. So they're uh, up into, here we get that down a little bit. So they're all along the coast here in Maryland, Philadelphia, uh, just below New York, up into Ohio, so just below Cleveland and that. And this was yesterday, so there might be some things. So very short, close distance then from there to, to Detroit which is up here so we have them here in ohio and then over on this other side we have them over here uh up as far as uh new york uh, new jersey i should say and into philadelphia and maryland in here so there's pennsylvania and everything right there and then when we get up into here's lake ontario and there's ottawa so we're looking I would say, again, dependent on the weather uh, and the way the weather goes in terms of uh, whether it's conducive to f uh, flight paths and stuff, depending on the wind direction and, uh, and food availability and all the factors that influence them. I would say that we're definitely looking at ruby-throated hummingbirds here in eastern Ontario uh, over the next week or two, a week to ten days or whatever. Uh, we find ourselves, you know, kind of middle of April, so they're sort of on track, maybe a tad earlier perhaps, people think, but uh, they're sort of on track, you know, by the mid to the end of April, we're often seeing them, so it's a great time to get the feeders washed up, cleaned up, prepped, any maintenance or repair that might be required, uh, and then uh, I wouldn't make your nectar just yet. I would wait until you have an opportunity uh, to see the birds or get get in this next week or so in. And then once that's happened, you can get the nectar ready, store it in your fridge, and uh, be prepared for our ruby-throated hummingbirds that are on their way. Can't wait. It's one of the best. I love those guys. We have one window feeder at our place, which is... Uh, this gem, actually, this little gem that here, that I, and uh, it's a window feeder, uh, and we've had that feeder on the same window in the same location, probably, I'm going to say five to seven years. I don't know that exact, but in, it's been five years, anyways, that we've used it on that same window in that same location in a little sitting area that we have by our screen porch. We have had on more than one occasion, and everybody else uh, can test this as well, that if we didn't have the feeder up, there's a hummingbird at that spot on the window. Isn't that amazing? I think it's absolutely fabulous to know that their internal mechanisms allow them to do that. We get prepared, be ready. Uh, they're on their way. It's going to be fun, and I can't wait. Have yourself a great day. We thought we'd talk about some hummingbird feeders and some features that make them very functional. Uh, um, all of these uh, different hummingbird feeders, and this is an Oriole feeder and that kind of stuff, the functioning, one of the main two or three or four uh, objectives uh, of the feeder is one, keep nectar in the feeder, not spilling outside the feeder, to keep the hornets and the wasps and all that kind of stuff away and ants and earwigs and what have you. 
to keep ants and earwigs out of the nectar. So this one, as you can see, this has a built-in ant moat here. So that means that you put water in this section, the nectar goes in this section, and when the ants and what have you come down the shaft, they end up in the water in the, in the center and not in your nectar. Now for feeders that don't have built in, we have ant moats that you fill this with water, has a secondary hook on the back side there that goes on the bottom and you would hook your feeder here and have that above your feeder so that no uh, ants and earwigs won't have you get into your nectar. Very important because as soon as they get in the nectar, there's no more hummingbirds, they won't go for it. Other key feature is that we have a molded flower here. This isn't a second piece that's just stuck in the hole that, to, to, in your feeder. This is all part of your feeder. And the reason that that's important is because then there's no nectar that's going to seep out, expand out, and get outside of the feeder and underneath this little piece that's going to attract the hornets and the ants and everything. Um, has all polycarbonate plastics, very, very durable, strong. If, uh, UV rays won't beat it up like it does the cheaper plastic. Other main feature is it's polycarbonate plastic is a very hard, dense plastic, and in and why that has two things. One, it's strong and, and durable. The other thing is that it's not porous and it doesn't absorb any toxins or odors or any part of the nectar or anything, which um, if let's say this sat out, the nectar went south and you didn't change it uh, for a week and the nectar soured, well that soft plastics will absorb that toxin. These won't do that. So this, is, this one is the Ultra Hum Zinger by Aspects of the US. Very, very good feeder. And I have the gem here and the uh, I love this guy. This is one of my favorite feeders here. This is a window feeder actually. So the suction cup mechanism is on the back here. It would go on the window. It has a couple different features. You can see I got two pieces here. So the su suction cup mechanism goes on the window. You can hang that on the window like that. This main piece here is an ant moat. You can fill that with water. Again, keeps your ants and stuff out of your nectar. This is what you fill and you can take it off and you can use it with the ant moat or you can just use this on its own, just on a window. Works fabulously. I should have one up to show you, but I don't. This is a great feeder also. All polycarbonate plastic, fully molded flowers. Other feature to this one, uh, it, you may be able to see there, see the nectar guards there? So that protrudes down below. So that keeps nectar on the inside, not on the outside. Excellent, excellent quality product. This is the Jewel Box. Uh, again, uh, by Aspects, the Jewel Box window feeder. Very, very good. Now, we also have the Jam, which is by Aspects. A little bit smaller, doesn't have the built-in ant moat, but equally as good a product. Um, this little fancy, this is called the Little Fancy, and I love this little feeder because uh, of the size of it. It's an eight ounce feeder, whereas the Humzinger is a 12 ounce feeder, so it's quite a bit bigger. I find eight ounces and less personally to be better because it, you're not using up all your nectar. So for instance, we have our plant-based uh, sweetener here with added vitamins and minerals. Same thing, you just heat up or mix up this whole bag to uh, one bag to four parts water cook it up a little bit on the stove, doesn't have to boil, but it's hot enough to dissolve all this. Let it cool, fill your feeder, put the rest in the fridge. Works excellent. So the smaller size feeders, I find personally, are more functional from that perspective. So again, all polycarbonate plastic, full molded flowers on the top. Built-in ant moat here. Um, easy to fill, nothing to it. Just pop it off with your thumbs. Full uh, protection nectar guards on the on the food ports, and when, one of the other cool features about this little fancy is to see all the decorative scrolling that's on the top there. Well, that is very very decorative, but 
it has a function. You can see the little split in it right there. Just, I hope you can see that on the camera. So this decorative scrolling that's on the top of this feeder is designed any rain or moisture or dew or any of that kind of stuff, hits that, gets collected by that decorative pieces and at those gaps, it channels the water away from the top of the feeder so that it doesn't go in to your nectar and, and then dilute it and then again, you're not going to be uh, functioning because the nectar is going to be all water-ish and the uh, hummingbirds aren't going to like it. So really, really nice feature to this little fancy. I love this little feature. Um, we've got a couple of the smaller ones, the hum blossoms and stuff that work really well. And this is an all glass bottle, uh, quite large. I would only fill that about half full when I'd be doing this. Again, molded flowers, polycarbonate plastic, uh, nice, nice product. All kinds of different ant moats, feeders, nectar guard tips, Oreo feeders, hummingbird food, brushes so that you can clean clean all your feeders and what have you, designed for working with uh, hummingbird feeders and stuff. Have this in a single size or double size. Time to get the hummingbird feeders out. Uh, ruby throats are on their way. Here we are, uh, first week of April, uh, 6th of April today, and I would suggest in two weeks the hummingbirds are going to be here. So just after Easter, be the time. Thanks for stopping by. Anything we can do to help out, sure to let us know. Check us out, gillygluebird.com. Have yourself a great day.